So the question is, why doesn't he grow up? Why does he still behave as a child? How can we help him get rid of these leftovers from childish behavior? <laughs> Those motherfuckers in their pointy shoes are going at it. <laughs> official oh, now man. we're a real show we're a real, we're a real show. show dude I, I gotta tell you that was pretty awesome I, and you know i did that myself you did, you did. yes I'm, I'm, swear to God. I'm, I'm like a proud mother i sat yes. at home <laughs> i sat at home in front of my computer for oh, fucking so hours that was really good so that was excited. very good good job you know it was simple it's simple too it, right it's not like it's, uh, all right. it's not very <laughs> elaborate it's perfect marcos doesn't like it marcos hey, it's marcos dude. rodriguez everybody Marcos Rodriguez, you want to introduce yourself? Could have elaborated on the bacon part. <laughs> the I'm the bacon saying. part? Yeah. Well, we haven't really like gone into bacon. We should. The, Alec has a problem with bacon. Uh, Alec, I, you want to? Does he? You want to tell us why? why? I used to have a problem with bacon. No, you still do. No, I eat bacon now. I yep. know you have eaten it, but like I saw you, your face. You don't know me. I saw your I saw your <laughs> face when you were eating it, and you're like, "This is a dirty animal." Yeah, it's still in me. Yeah. It's a gross animal. I was raised not. Believing pork was good for you, cause religion. Cause religion. End of story. <clears throat> so, what religion is that? A Judeo Christian. They had a. We've talked about they this. Have a problem. Yeah, but I, I. They have a problem with pork. Yeah, they're like Jews, but Jesus stuff. I don't know. And I didn't eat pork for a long time. So and I have it now, which is rare. Still, I'm like. <laughs> That's how Jesus came back to life. Is that what happened? Sprinkle yeah. some bacon on that motherfucker. <laughs> 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 fucking sea walking in that cave. He's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> Bacon, well, nectar sense, of life. Right? It's, it got in my psyche. It got deep in there. Oh, shit. It got deep in there. Turn your fucking oh, phone off. Oh, That's probably a good yep. idea. Or keep it on there. vibrate right under your balls. There, there are literally balls, yeah. dozens of people that will listen to this. We got 10 subscribers. No big deal. There are at least 10. Yeah, man. No, that fucking got me. Still to this day. Yeah, you still have trouble with pork, huh? got me. It, and it makes sense because it used to be that pork could get trichinosis, right? Yeah, like super the, sick. The, uh, Pigs ate both like uh, animals and they eat anything, right? They'll eat whatever. They'll yeah. eat carcasses. They'll eat anything. So it's just like bears. Yeah. Like if you shoot a bear and you want to eat it, you have to cook it to a certain temperature. You have to make sure it doesn't get trichinosis. Right. Or you cook out the trichinosis before you eat it. It was, so, it was more of a utility back in the day. Well, it used to be that people Trash would cleaner. fucking die, right? So if you're eating pork eat that and shit people anywhere. were just dying, <laughs> like it's American. like, and you're just noticing. Like, think, like, let's go back in time. Think about it, right? We're, like, in a village, and there's, like, eight assholes that, like, eat pigs, and, like, every so often one of them dies. Yeah. And the rest of us don't it's eat pigs, and that's we don't really just, it's true. nobody just drops more pigs, dead. less assholes. See you, what I did there? Well, you would think, <laughs> <laughs> you would think, though, that God's fucking killing people that are eating pigs. Yeah, that's exactly. So you would make it against the law <sighs> of God to eat pork, right? That's weird. I'm a god. I'm gonna put an animal, but tell you not to eat it. Boom, go. What? <laughs> All right, cool, man. Logic. Well, it, was just, it was their best guess. Yeah. Of what was going on? I mean, there's, lot, there's lots of plants you can eat. eat. It, he would put a dick <laughs> on top of the pig's head. Just so it'd be like a just like a, just like a walking yeah. dick. Just like that's where it fucked, right? In well, what if what if God's gay and he was like thinking, oh, hey here's girl, a good way. What's up? Maybe I'll bacon just dicks for everybody. Bacon. Make, put these delicious dicks on people's faces or pigs' faces. If if pigs did have dicks on their face and it was the most delicious thing in the world. How often shit. would you eat pig dick? I don't. It wouldn't affect. I'll eat pig dick now. No, I don't care. That, is it, yeah. If it's good, is it good? I don't know. I mean, I'll have All to right. cook it. Uh, yeah. just, add that to the, the things list. to do list. Today. The list. Eat pig don't dick? they have like, we'll look for like pig dicks. corkscrew dicks? What am I, I don't know. That's their tails. But no. I like where your head's at. Okay. Cool. Neat. What about like uh, sheep's balls or like uh, goat balls? Bull balls. Would I, you guys eat that stuff? I'd probably I'd do it. Why not? Like, how well would each of you do on Fear Factor? I do all right. I have oh, a really dude, bad, I have a really bad sense of smell. Ooh, oh, so you, so that's helps. good. That helps. No, I mean, I, I I do well because I have a bad sense of smell. Oh, I yeah. can do, smell affects your taste. Quite yeah, a bit. he's right. Marcus? I can do anything but the fucking water bugs. Those yeah, bugs, bugs will get me. Marcus is terrified of bugs. Like no, 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 not bugs. Just roaches. Just roaches. Big roaches. I love. I've seen an app in real life. Them. It's hilarious. Oh, Lord. 
<laughs> insects and stuff like that. But if you can't tell, Marcus is, is like six one, two hundred crazy. Marcus pounds. is a big dude. He's fucking huge. He can make his boobies bounce. Them what's, what's inside your shirt? Hey, what is that? You have an animal in there? <laughs> My pecs. There's, There's a small animal. fox just dancing it, around his chest. It looks like a possum is trying to break out of your chest. <laughs> If by possum you mean Wolverine, then yes. <laughs> <laughs> Honey Badger don't care. <laughs> Honey Badger live in Marco's chest. <laughs> God damn. So, what's going on, man? What's new? Life? Lifting them Life, weights? Man, lifting weights. Weekend a couple of weeks. Um, Dude, you are, you're a busy trainer, huh? How many, how many sessions do you do a week? I used to do a lot. Not so much now. It's really? July, so it's a little... Well, it's slow yeah, right now. Yeah. But, like, you're a pretty busy guy. I keep myself busy. I just train myself. Do you do you uh, have a particular type of client? Uh, actually, most like of my women. clients are just really. Uh, I would consider them intermediate. I really don't deal with a lot of, uh, I guess, beginners. It just worked out that way. Yeah. And then those clients gave me referrals with other people who were about in the same fitness level. So. Yeah. Do you, do you train like guys, girls, different ages? Like what different? I train a pretty young crowd. I would say uh, mid thirties to early forties. Uh, oldest guy I ever trained was like 88, but that was kind of rough. Whoa. Smelled like death. You know? 88? Yeah. Like at 88? What is that guy doing? What do you even he do? He forgot who I was like every other session. He was like, yo, George, right here. <laughs> I had to do that today. <laughs> with, with an older woman or man? Mal. Yeah. <laughs> She'll never listen to it's, this. You're fine it's, with like, it's rough how you want to help them, but they don't, I'm gonna say they don't name, process but things. You shouldn't she say her will, name. The odds of her listening to this it's, podcast. Don't do don't it. Worry about you'd her. be surprised. <laughs> Are none. Cool. What none? What did she do today? All right. So Eagles. I, I, I totally. Eagles I I uh, I show. I demonstrated an exercise, and um, and then she just looked at me, and she just, just kept looking at me, and then I was like, okay, and then she was like, okay, and then I was like, okay, <laughs> and, and I like I kind of gave her that look, and I was like, oh, you don't even remember what just happened. You know what's going on right now. So I demonstrated it again. And then she did. It's like the yeah. notebook. You part watch. Two. You watch the reset, like a, a, a like computer resetting. You watch that. I the reboot. It, and then <laughs> the I didn't, reboot. And then I didn't want to be rude, you know. So I didn't want to say anything about it. I was just like, oh, okay, you're old. It's like the uh, notebook you part part two, but only you're in the gym. Yeah, that's exactly what it yeah, is. You think of like that. What? what? What the fuck? She would forget oh. about it. Total red so he band. Does have a, yeah. You you are a red band every so bit. often. <laughs> it's like, damn it. What? He's like 19, bro. What'd you say, what, yeah. were, what were you saying the other day? I was talking about like uh fisting. Like a <laughs> No, we were talking about yes. um a uh, like a cool bartenders and like underground like uh uh speakeasies. Okay. And I was like, "Yeah, and he'll like uh make like cool cool drinks." And you go, "Yeah, and he'll like drink our pee." And we're, I'm like, <laughs> "What?" <laughs> like <laughs> No, <laughs> like you just not you, what, it is what I said, but it's also kind of just no. in my mind it worked out differently. In yeah. his in his mind, it worked out really. <laughs> I get him. <laughs> Thank Marcos. I get, get it. it. Get it. Marcos. Gets in it. his mind, we were talking about hipster bars, and I was like, "They're so hipster. They don't even have a bathroom. They just have a guy to drink your pee." Oh yeah. And I thought weird. it was funny, just and Kyle weird. just kind of no. stared, and we kept, kept walking. <laughs> I wanted to. Be, I wanted to laugh at it. Like I wanted. So I wanted to be on board with that one. You just but I couldn't. I was like. Am I, yeah. I can't connect those. I don't see it. I am still kind of drunk. It's like Waterworld, but in Brooklyn. Yeah, now Alec is still kind of hammered, so like apologies. At, Sorry. Know, beforehand. No this is the so, most sober I've ever seen him, by the way. I just want that to be known. <laughs> so, Marcos, you're uh, a bodybuilder. No, I'm not, actually. Yeah, you're not. You are. No, that's very Tell, biased of you. How okay, are you not okay. a bodybuilder? Racist and sexist. And okay, all that that's stuff. All. Okay, what? What? Fine. Okay, so Tumble you're lip, not right? interested in building your body bigger. That is not what your mo is. Stronger. Really? Yeah. All you're right. Shaking your head, Alec. You should not agree. You, you drunk? Alec, would you like to jump in? It's here? totally. Dude, what are you doing? Are you always coming to the gym, flex your arms, and just like maybe curl some shit, and that's. I'm um, not flexing my arms, and I never work out my arms. Citizens of Titan. You don't work out your arms? No, I was born this way. You're so full of shit. <laughs> I used to when I was younger, but then my arms got so retarded I couldn't look normal in the shirt, so I stopped. Oh, you stopped just working on about it. ten years ago when I was his age. I feel like there's a natural progression that happens in training, mm. and I think it starts with aesthetics. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you fall into, you want to develop yourself, you want to look better. 
Wasn't that how we, all you guys started reading like muscle Definitely. magazines as a kid? Definitely. And you're like, oh, that's the guy. Yeah. I'd be like that guy. I mean, for me, it started like this. I worked out because I had to because with sports you have to. Like it's part of like do you, do you play football or do you play sports? No. Like, well, you fucking they make you. You know, so it's not even a fun part of the game, but like you have to do it anyway. Then, like when you're done. You just don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want your workouts to suck. So you want them to be kind of fun and easy. Which is like bodybuilding is like it's not easy, but it's monotonous. It's slower. You know yeah, what I mean. Just, you can you can take it's your gratifying time. though when you it's see gratifying. changes in your body. Feels yeah. good to yeah. get a good pump. It's you know like what I'm I mean. I'm coming at home. I'm coming at the yeah. gym. I'm coming everywhere. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So for like maybe like six or seven years, like that was my mo. Like just get like build this body is like perfect so i could make it like if, if i could and then eventually you do you sort of do develop your body and you get to a good spot and then you're like oh like it's not all i hoped it would be you know you like you think like oh i'll get to this great looking body and life will be easy and girls will just throw themselves at me I and guys will bow down to me and like that's, yeah that's like the doesn't fucking happen bro science right there that's right the bro science well, yeah, yeah. How'd that work out for you, Kyle? Well, it doesn't happen. All right. So, <laughs> so didn't happen? Be that as it may. So it didn't happen. But then you... Uh, Maybe, I feel you, like bro. Maybe that you, next, bro. I feel like that next <laughs> step is like strength, right? Then you get to the spot where you're, you're, you want to challenge and see how far you can push yourself, see what you're capable of like uh, of doing. Like what how uh, what are you capable of of doing with your actions, right? Have you ever seen his deadlift video? What mm -hmm. was that? It was like, was it 460 or 510? I don't remember. Who are you talking to? You. 550. It was five. It was five. Around the room. It was 550. Because <laughs> I know he wasn't talking about me. 410. Oh my yeah, bad. that's hilarious. Bro, yes. He did 550 for was it 12? Oh uh, no, that was 405 for 12. Okay. After I did 315 Holy for like 20. Or something. Yeah, it's a lot of weight. Yeah, no. Cordyceps oh, mushrooms, bro. <laughs> Dude, do you know what's really funny? What's that? So we have these interns. And one of them is cock strong. I mean, he is fucking. Define cock strong because I'm getting confused. Stupid what kind of strong. This is. Okay. Stupid, like, doesn't make sense. It's got a 500 pound. Doesn't squat. look like he should be that strong. Stronger than everybody. So he's an intern. How old is he? 22. When I was 22, I was cock strong too. Yeah. Were you, were you back sure squatting you 500 pounds? In my head, I was. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this guy fucking walks into the gym. Back squats, 230 for two. And everybody in the gym, like no matter, like, any guy in the room was just like, okay, you win. Like that, 230 like, that's, two? that's how tribal. 230 for two? For 230 kilos. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Yeah, kilos? we're in America, so make sure you say pounds. Yeah, sorry, you're confused. When you're in Canada, you can say kilos, but here in America. He's trying to get that Euro subscriber group. <laughs> yeah, metric systems. It's 506 right. pounds for anyone who's confused. It's 506. How many two. poods is that? I mean, I mean, what's that in pood? Five hundred. <laughs> but like, this guy drops like ass to grass. The bar looks like it's gonna break, and then he just drives up through it. Everybody in the gym is like, "All right, well, you're our king. He's alpha now." <laughs> <laughs> like, and that's why didn't honestly, you give that medal to him? That's honestly how yeah. you feel. Like, it's yeah. that easy. Yeah. I kind of like that though. It's simpler. Yeah. You know, I kind of wish the rest of the world operated that way. <laughs> you know, it's it's straightforward, and you can't argue with it. You know what I mean? Like, that's he's fucking the, stronger. That's probably the best thing what that ever happened say? to you, Jim. It was awesome. It could be the best or the worst, because that's either going to motivate people to actually get stronger, and then you're going to have your egomaniacs that are going to want to lift that much and hurt themselves in the process. So, Well, I mean, I think hurting yourself is just a fucking part of it. Yeah, I, I, I don't even think anymore, like, the goal should be to avoid injury. It's I mean, like... What are you guys' worst it's injuries? Like, you don't want to be stupid, but at the same time, some of the best uh, evolution I've made in the gym came after injuries. Yeah, always, yeah. every time. So Kyle snapped his leg in half. Yeah, really? that was my worst injury. But that, that was femur, or like uh, below my the my tibia and my fibia. So like, what are uh, you at Kumate or something? See. Was Bolo Young there? there? <laughs> and that's just from too much weight. Like it was in a Muay Thai gave out. Uh, no, I was playing football, uh, and I I got pulled backward, like over top. My foot was dragging behind me. And I got pulled back this way. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. <laughs> just, just How'd that feel? Oh my god. I love the way he describes the screaming. So I, I fell I fell flat on my back. I I saw it. I spit my mouthpiece straight up into the air and then I just screamed like this. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And then I passed out. <laughs> I want to pass out from watching that. That's a great Dude. scream. Dude, God, I can only, I'd cry. No, I was out. And then when I woke up, I was in the hospital. Nice. What's morphine like? They fixed it. It's pretty great, man. <laughs> Dude. Pretty great. Oh, I mean, like I, I do. I remember um, when they gave me the meds. I kept. Uh, I thought I was someone else. Like it actually. <laughs> Who, who's this someone else? I don't. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Alter like, ego. Yeah, no, no, because I was talking to the nurses. Like, what was his name? Like uh, reverse Tyrone. Kyle. Tyrone. 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 Kyle's black and reverse. No, I, I, I told you. I told you this. Uh, like the drunkest I may have ever gotten. I got myself so drunk. I convinced myself that I was Michael Vick's agent and I was running around the dorms like screaming like to get Michael out of bed because he was late for something. <laughs> like, Fucking. I literally drank myself into a different reality. What's your worst injury? I like that. Yeah. This motherfucker's weird. <laughs> yeah. I'm, my worst injury is my brain taking the pounding from this guy right now. Um, <laughs> I, I oh, tore every ligament I right now. Yeah. I <laughs> tore good. every ligament and tendon in my right knee. Wow! What did you do that for? How uh, did you do that? Working out with powerlifters and I knew nothing about steroids and supplements, and I thought the only way to get stronger was just you know just load four hundred pounds on the fucking bar and squat it. Um, I oh. remember what I was, it was. It was so you really you injured yourself on the lift. Like yeah. in the lift. Oh, yeah. I yeah, that's it. what I was curious about. If you I felt it. Hurt yourself um, on the lift. Couldn't get up. And of course, like a Whoa, dumb asshole, you... young, dumb, and full of testosterone. Huh. Uh, I tried Damn. to do it again and I couldn't fucking move my leg. Wow. And uh, went to the hospital, got a x ray MRI, and everything was fucking torn. I left it like that for years and fixed it like two years after, but I didn't do legs for a long time. Insert bodybuilder tagline here. <laughs> that's awesome. I also separated my AC joint uh, one time, reverse benching 275 on the six rep, locked it out, reverse bench. You know what's crazy? I don't know that I've ever really seen or heard some. No, one time. I've only only once seen someone get injured on an exercise. Yeah. Like, I think it's overstated how often that happens. I think you have to be really strong to do that, too. Yeah. It's funny because I was so much stronger at a reverse bench than a regular bench before I tore my shoulder. And uh, the gym where I worked at, Coliseum Gym in Queens, was uh, it was shitload of power lifters and bodybuilders and uh, a few Olympic lifters. But everyone there was a fucking beast. You know, it was guys yeah. fucking benching seven, eight hundred pounds, squatting eight, nine hundred pounds, two hundred pound dumbbells. Everyone was just like a phenom. Um, Jesus. Yeah. So I'm so, here, young kid, trying to get strong like everybody else, working out with all these older guys and shit. And, were the were the steroids flowing like, like the rivers of Babylon? <laughs> uh, not as really? much as you would think. Not really? as much as I see here in the city. Can I ask you guys a question really? about that? Yeah, What's up? I've always been curious. Like, can people actually get to that point without supplementing? What point? So. What point? Like, like yeah, being able to lift point. five, six hundred, seven hundred pounds without fucking yes. ingesting so. drugs? Yes. yes, I think so. Yeah. Yes, proper uh, supplementation, rest, diet. It takes uh, decades. Periodization takes longer, and you have harder. to be younger. Yeah, you definitely need. I you mean, genetics really do play a part, but uh, start young for sure. Yeah, like that. That's have you? So have you ever taken steroids, Marcus? Maybe a little bit. Allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, have allegedly. allegedly have you ever taken steroids? I uh, I have. I'll be. First of all, right then, yeah, I have to then. <laughs> all right. I don't. I don't. I don't care. We're not I, don't, doing any I today. don't mind sharing. Um, After the fact. I, I think people really have no real understanding for what they do. You know, I don't. It, it, they think it's like magic. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> just like the they, problem, they do, though. They, they do. do. They, they think, think you it. like take it and then just you just. Well, the problem like is right. Not. So most people who do it, you get these young kids, maybe even younger than Alec, who are skinny, low self esteem. You know, they have that whole body dysmorphia disorder thing, and you know, two cycles later, they're fifty pounds heavier with fucking cannon shoulders and you know six pack and all the chicks all are all, all over them so they went from being you know the herb punk ass kid to now being coolest yeah. kid on the block yeah. so why come off of steroids ever right and well, i and, know so many guys and, that, you know have just, been on for fucking years and it's like you're gonna die in like two minutes doesn't it shrivel your wiener your no, testicles it's, it, your testicles. testicles don't have to produce testosterone so, so they, they just, don't so they go on retract they hibernate yeah. Oh wow! And that does happen. They're like under your lungs. Yeah, I have, so. I have two brothers on. Uh, they're on what are they on? <laughs> Testosterone right now. 
and they fucking love it. Well, I'll tell you, man. They love it. I mean, if I'm gonna go back and and like evaluate the best I've ever felt, mm. definitely fuck, on steroids. You feel awesome, man. Like I, fe- I've never felt more. You feel like Superman's like boss. a man. Yes, <laughs> Superman's like, boss. Your okay. your description. Like uh, people always uh, talk about like roid rage or like that like anger. I never never it had that. It amplifies your person, your deepest personality. So mm. if you're a real cool person, you're gonna mm. be fucking super cool. If you're one of those fucking schizo kids who has fucking problems and everything bothers you, you're probably oh, gonna be an asshole. It's yeah. gonna go even more. I thought yeah. just the overload of testosterone was just a bad thing, but you, it actually plays off your. Off I, you. I felt more okay. Kyle-ish. Yeah, like I like I felt optimized <laughs> Kyle. Gotcha. You know what I mean? I did. I, that makes a lot of sense because I did. That, that that's a good description of like how I felt. I felt very like yeah. my. I felt like my best, most confident version of myself. Yeah, cool. But all the time. Yeah, I will say this though. From watching my brother do testosterone now, because uh, he used to be a fighter and he retired, so. Now we can go on testosterone because he had some. He basically, his pituitary glands not producing the right amount and stuff like that, so he could take it legally. Dude, in like three months, he fucking ballooned because he worked trained hard anyway. He was an MMA fighter. Fuck out of nowhere, he fought at 170, 155 once, and now he's like 220, just walking around. Just wow. A fucking house. Because he trained really hard, and then he started taking that, and then he trained The good thing about the really roids, too, is that it helps with your rest period. So, yeah. I mean, once you come off. You're doing like two days now. If you train really intensely like i'm sore all the fucking time you know people always tell me like oh man look at you you're walking with swag that's not swag yeah. motherfucker my legs hurt i can't sore. You fucking i'm my limping knees. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm limping you're sore asshole. all the time but when you're on roids it's like you could fucking squat for four hours and fucking sea walk afterwards like for two it's hours. true what is so, the sea walk you speak of it's a crip walk. It's a, a gangster dance. Of <laughs> no, sorts. but I mean, like I do remember that you f- you feel like you could do your heaviest, hardest workout twice a day, every day, and you'd be f- you'd recover from it. Like, and you get so six, fucking six pumped. Hours. It's like sex in your veins. But you guys don't do them anymore. Why so why it? why did, well, why I'll, off of them? I'll now? tell you why I don't ever want to do them again. When I stopped, I experienced the worst depression terrible. I've ever experienced Whoa. in my life. Jesus. Like legit depression. Like, and I, I'm not like I'm not. A super depressed type of guy. Like, I'll have ups and downs, but, like, this was bad down, yes. man. Agreed. Like, this was, well, like... your libido's down, man. So when your dick isn't working, you feel down, you don't look the same you did two, three months ago. Yeah. So that fucks with well, visually and, with, and with, with yourself. Some of the post-cycle therapies that you do actually make you sad. Like, there's actually some that, like, the side effect of it is sad. Like, I remember they... Well, uh, increase your estrogen and all clo- that stuff. Like, huh? Clomid. Mm-hmm. Clomid, like, just made me cry. <laughs> like, no, I'm serious. Like, I remember taking it, and I would just cry. Maybe you, bro. Maybe, maybe I would you, just bro. cry. I'd just get sad and be crying and be like, why am I crying? I what Jack know. Burton says about crying. But, like, Clomid, Clomid's used for, like... Um, like pregnant women or something. Like, but it, it helps your, it's you like know a, how you were talking about your, um, your testicles, like not, or they shrivel up a little bit because they're not producing testosterone. Clomid has the effect of bringing that back. It boosts it up. But at the same time, it just fucking makes you sad. I don't know. I don't know what that's all about, but it made me just cry. You, you, were, on a, you were on a high for so long. You're, Maybe. You're doing the balance. It, but is, it was it, awful. That's a good way and, of putting Angela. And I wouldn't. Yeah, it, it, it is. You were stealing your happiness from your future self. <laughs> and it, it, and it's I like, got to pay, bitch. Get, yeah. it, you, you have to pay up, man. There, there's no biological I'm glad you made it through lunch. the other side. I am too. And and I don't want to do it again. You know, like it's I think everybody should make the, I don't think they're good or bad. I think yeah, uh, everybody kind of should make their own decision about it, like do their own research, make up their own mind. Um, I think but in the future, I don't want to. Even now, anymore. I mean, the problem is too many people do it at a young age. I did it when I was younger. Yeah. You did it when you were yeah, younger. Yeah, I was younger too. When we already have our tests, it's already, you know, I have enough testosterone for like yeah. 10 African villages because yeah. I'm Dominican. <laughs> Kyle, maybe not so much. But, you know, if you're in your 40s and 50s, go for it, man. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, if you have, I, I with the with consent that. of a doctor, you know, you're doing your blood work properly. Yeah, yeah. You're getting your shots. You're getting not overdoing human it. grade shit. You're not getting some shit they're making in Tijuana off of a fucking cow's. So you guys can yeah, get this from a doctor? Dick. Like yeah. if it's Absolutely. There's prescriptions for testosterone. Oh, That's wow. how my brothers get it. There's clinics you because can they go need to. it. Wow. Rejuvenation really clinics it. actually do it here. So right. it's like, and it's so weird how it's looked down upon. But like, it's the same shit when women <clears> go get like breast implants and Botox and yeah. acid inject- injections. Shit. It's the same shit, dude. It's birth control. 
Women yes. take estrogen yeah. Yeah, to daily. Fuck with their think how yeah. m- think how many gr- like probably half the fucking women on the planet, or at least in the U.S., are on birth control. Birth They're taking body. some form of and estrogen they they every fucking be. day. Yeah. But if a guy, if a guy is taking testosterone, something that occurs naturally in something his body, wrong with him. all the time, meat, that yeah, fucking the meat oh, he's he's a cheater. Yeah. He's a meathead. He's probably like super mean insecure. and crazy yeah. and angry, insecure, tiny nuts. I like how you said the cheating you know, thing like, too, because that's real. They'll just assume, oh, he's fucking everybody. He can't be. Well, no, just, I was stop. talking. With that? I was talking more in oh, the in sense sports. of like sports. you're cheating oh, okay. at exercise, sports. Like you're cheating at development. Yeah. Like you're skipping. Cheating. Yeah. I yeah. See, I mean, if yeah, you, Alec. If you're gonna play that <laughs> card. If you're gonna play that card, like you gotta play that card with protein, you gotta play that card with creatine, Everything, every you gotta play that ever. card with diet, with sleep. That yeah. that's all bullshit. All of them are tools. They're all training tools. Yeah. This is another training tool. There's a there's a good bad. Well, not. I think fucking painkillers and amphetamines are totally. worse than fucking steroids. Way, yeah. way worse. Way worse. Way and worse. that shit's tossed out Antibiotics. on the reg. Antibiotics. Let's kill everything in your stomach. Yeah. Okay, that's normal. Thanks. Yeah. Boom. I mean, it's you do need to fuck, take it for certain fuck things. Fuck floral, but, but you know. Yeah. Fuck, fuck your digestion, all that stuff. Painkillers, man. Yeah, we have we have a really fucked up perception uh, on view drugs. of drugs in general. Like I, the the, the word drugs sucks. Yeah. Sucks. Like it because it it encompasses so much shit. Yeah, it's a dumb umbrella term. It's laziness, really. Because then if you just say, "Oh, it's a drug," what does that mean then? Because now it has a negative connotation, and we can't it's use ignorance. it. And somehow we have a, we have a list of of drugs that have positive connotation and negative connotation. Nobody mm-hmm. fucking thinks twice about somebody taking an aspirin or ibuprofen or but marijuana. Uh, you fucking devil, you coffee. How dare oh, you, sir? How dare you ingest a perfectly normal uh, drug? I don't want actually... to be lazy and right. bad and yeah. stoner, hipster, play video games. Whatever, yeah. yeah, I I think that's changing I now. Do. We uh, we talked a little bit about but that's this our history. generation, <laughs> the older generations that don't know that whole you know <laughs> William Randolph Hearst story Baby boomers. With the prop- propaganda and all that shit. Yeah. They're still stuck on stupid. There's definitely a new story being painted, though. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. with 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 the shit that's uh, going on in Colorado and yeah. Washington right now, it's legal. Awesome. I mean, like that is a that is an insane thought. That's exciting. Like, actually, think about this for a second. If we were in Colorado, we could go to the Seven Eleven, and there would be weed in there <laughs> for sale. <laughs> well, not the Seven Elevens, but I get what you're saying. Well, like, yeah, whatever. Totally like what you're basically a shop where anyone's yeah. allowed to go in. As what long are we doing over here? He's, I don't know, he's pulling up no, I'm saying, what are we doing here? Oh, we should be in Colorado. Yeah, yeah you guys want to go? Denver's doesn't, awesome. Doesn't it make you want to go visit at least? You ever been to Denver? Just to see what's going on. I want to see like what's going on to the, with the people. Oh, I yeah. want to see like just like in, on a social scale. Yeah, yeah. How like cool. in a social scale. Everyone's level. playing hacky sack and like. Hasn't hasn't crime gone down since the legalization? Last thing I read was 10% of non drug related crimes. So like things. So people are just getting nicer. So th- everything, not counting weed, yeah. you know, because you would assume, well, if it's legal, there will be no weed arrest. But right. not counting those, just the other stuff, 10%. like the domestic disputes. Driving violence, all that's down ten percent. Domestic and violence. They have, they have. What is it? Sixteen million dollars worth in tax revenue just from four months. Well, you know what the tax percentage is on weed sales? It's like twenty five percent. It's like thirty nine percent. Thirty nine percent. That's. I mean, it's it's absurd, but fuck it, fuck it. If that means everyone gets weed, politicians cool, must be kicking themselves I in the ass. I wouldn't care. Like, we should have fucking done that. Mm. Well, I, I, I don't I care. care. I pay whatever. You know, if you really have a problem with the uh, the tax rate. Grow it. Yeah. Yeah. Grow your own. Like, I think you're allowed to grow up to six plants, right? Pretty sure. Do you know what you could do with six plants? That's, an, that's, an, that's, that's abs- enough. It's crazy. <laughs> it's like a neighborhood. It's enough for you and your friends. And I'm grandma's sure. friends. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and, and here's the, the crazy thing that we were talking about yesterday is that it's always been uh, a fucking, like, you couldn't be successful if you were a pothead. You oh, were not yeah. allowed to be successful. The like, right. There was a huge stigma, right? You couldn't be a billionaire. You couldn't be like uh, the owner of a sports team. You couldn't be like a, a real true success story if you smoked weed regularly, right? But you could fucking drink every night. Like yeah. that was a, you yeah. could have your scotch you every your, night. Your Nobody would think twice. <laughs> so now you're gonna have real weed businesses, you know that that are making billions of dollars that are run by people that yeah. smoke weed probably daily so we're going to have this new breed of of professional stoners and now that that idea is fucking hilarious because we have fucking what's the biggest one of the biggest businesses in the United States fucking alcohol so we have like so people who who make a poison that makes you retarded that's professional cool we accept that 
cool, man. Yeah, we you make that a you about make about that elixir of doom. It's part cool. I would say it's part of but being a professional because you have to go right. like or, how, or nectar of the gods, whatever you, gods, whatever you want to call it. How many you of our how many <laughs> of our clients like how many how big of an issue is it with clients that they have to go or our clients have to go out with their clients to get business and drink. Right, and, and like all we're constantly it is, like, well, let's do drugs, let's drink, yeah. let's get as buddy chummy as we can, so you could either you know buy my product, yeah. sell me this, or I sell you that. It's but that's cool. That work. drug has become a social norm yeah. for for a whole industry. But me, the trainer, yeah. goes home and like has a few tokes off a of vaporizer, <laughs> and everybody's like, yeah, that's Kyle the stoner. <laughs> He'll <laughs> never be anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's silly. <laughs> But it, awesome. but that is how kind of how people's minds think about this these topics. It's crazy. It's really cool though. I'm I'm really excited to see to be alive right now and watch it shift and change. Yeah. It, it just became legal the other day in New York for, uh, for um, medicinal purposes. Yeah, I saw that. It's but pretty, it's it's very limited. Right? It's gonna be like yeah. just AIDS patients. Yeah. But it's a, it's like a yeah. You have to be a very far along. You, have, gonna, you need to be. You have to have like smelling of death. Cancer. Serious. Angelo, cancer. you're dying next week. Here's your weed. Thanks, yeah. assholes. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for nothing. So, I guess. Is that? Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? Because I was, I was oh, thinking it, about it. It's a step. It's a step. Is it a step in a good direction? Step yeah. in the right. Because all those states that that were had it legal now, they have like California might as well have it recreational legally wise. They might as well, even though it's yeah. not. And they right. they did that. That was the first step they did. It was medicinal years later, recreational. Yeah. So fuck well, it. You know, oh wait. And what's really kind of interesting in New York is it's very decriminalized. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I don't have a whole lot of. If if, if all they that's, did in New that's York. That's a recent if thing. They for you. Yeah. Well, I was just gonna say for me. Pull you right. over if, with ten pounds of weed. They'll be like, yeah. ah, son, get out of here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They'd be My last name is that. Rodriguez. Yeah. I get shot in the fucking face with the twelve gauge. Seriously. Probably. Why, why do you think I'm so paranoid? Yeah. When I'm, I can't. Like I can't carry it. I'm going to jail. The. The Brooklyn yeah. Brooklyn DA announced that he wasn't going to pursue uh, first time possession or or use marijuana citations. What, what did the Manhattan DA yeah. say? Yeah, what did they say? Well, the Bronx. He hasn't, he hasn't said anything. I don't trust any of those fools. I'm sorry, I don't. I've been stopped no, and frisked good, enough to, to know. You've been frisked in the city. Frisked. Yeah. Frist, yeah. Um, Stop like at least three times. Yeah. Is that is that when still, I was younger? Is well, that still I, going on in New York. Is it's because we look the way we look, right, Alex? That's yeah. exactly why. Yeah. So, of you if, three, who's been stopped and frisked? What? Really? Yeah. Man. Yeah. Holy I've shit! I've had like yeah, my bags Sorry, looked at, but I've never been frisked. What? Okay. Luckily. I grew up in Washington what? Heights. I went to high school so in Harlem. What? what the fuck do you think? Like, break down the story for me, kind of like what what happened. Walking on the fucking train, book yeah. bag, yo, come here, pull over. All yeah. right, fuck it. I have nothing in my bag, whatever. Just check your shit. Check you out. That's it. You usually get, no you know, you want to just... act smart, and you're like, why are you pulling me over? You fit, yeah. you fit the, the description of somebody. That's always their yeah. go-to. So it's, it's what do you say to that? I was like, all right. Same as I with me. I always, they always get me when I'm going to school, to, to college, yeah. which is hilarious. But when I'm going to college, they're always like, come here. Come you know what's funny? Around. I never like, thought about this now, but I just realized it. That's up? why I wear cargo shorts, because I never want to walk around with a fucking bag anywhere because yeah. of that. Yeah. And I just thought of that now. Same here. I need a bag, man, for my fucking laptop. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, it's annoying. It's like some straight, like, just weird cop state type thing. It's just fucking weird. It's because there'll be a group of people. I'll be, I'll be walking, or with a group of friends, other students. Everyone's whatever they are, and then you know you. Come here, sorry. I just realized something it's the terrible. Beard, dude. What'd you do? I didn't hit the record button on that camera. Oh, that's funny. Fuck it, it's whatever. <laughs> there is a green light on it. Well, that's uh, it's usually the red light. Oh, let me go turn around. <laughs> that's funny. Fuck, man, I moved my fucking tits for this. Yeah. <laughs> you ever see this, Alec? Yes, I have. The spiders cool. on drugs and this and the patterns cool. they make. Yeah. Very cool. It's pretty great. I but yeah, man, is stop. The camera getting this now. Yeah, it's getting it now. Getting it now. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you missed earlier, audience. That's all right. I mean, you know what? Yeah. I think we're, what we're figuring out about the podcast anyway is the best way to do it is probably to uh, edit it, you yeah. know, split it up yeah, into yeah. like topics and shit. Drugs. So yeah. at, least, at least in the video format. Yeah. Steroids. Steroids. Broken legs. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Police. Sex. Yeah. Stop and frisk. <laughs> you guys want to talk about sex? Yeah. Impressions. Alex, so Alec, you've been getting laid left and right. Oh, that's awesome. Don't What's let, his name? Don't, don't, yeah. Phil. Tell us about this gentleman. Uh, he's got a huge dick. No, it's, yes. been, it's been good, man. I'm blossoming. It's like it keeps saying. It's You're really like, growing into yourself, Dude, huh? yeah. Once you let go of the baggage that is of the past, it's like, whoa. Yeah. You get laid really insecurities, quick. Insecurities, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's insecurities, yeah. Because now, I'm, for the most part, I'm like 95% comfortable being me. 
It's pretty solid. Good Isn't for you. It's amazing that that's like the most attractive thing that oh, you can dude. do for yourself. I literally do nothing but it's like... just be yourself. Yeah. I just pull sometimes red band moments, but other than that, I'm solid. You know what? But What's a red if band you, moment? If you own the when red band moments... you say something moments? inappropriate like, hey, would you mind if I piss in your asshole later? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like now, in a group of people are, in their 40s. Now, chances are, the girl, yeah, I may not think it's funny, but... Yeah. That's one percent. You may get it, yeah. then it's fucking glorious. Yeah, yeah. What's up? it's true. If you own it, too. Yeah. you know, if you own it, it's an experience. It. But yeah, it's all in the delivery. God damn, it's Tinder. So, it's so amazing, Tinder. like how just opening up and being yourself just makes people want most, to be around you. It's the it most makes, attractive quality. It makes people attracted to you. Girls whom you guys, even girls whom you guys have, like I've approached and gone for, they're usually what like alpha females, like girls who are just like themselves, and you, maybe they work out. Crazier or, the oh, better. totally. How great is it when you run into a girl that's like fully herself even if she's All not like a dime like even if yeah, she's yeah. not you know like a pretty girl that is fully comfortable and cool and open and expressive yeah. like that's Except so farting. attractive bitches can't fart don't fart no, besides not, that stop very, very, that. very <laughs> confident stop it that sort of is expressive goose. but like yeah. it's so sort of attractive when somebody is like Great fully game. being themselves yeah I think that's why I wanted to, you know wanted to do this podcast so bad because I I figured we would we would have to open up eventually. No, yeah, you have to. You can't do this sort of format for this long without just showing your cards. Right. And and I, and, and it, it feels so fucking good when you just like bear yourself. You know, yeah. like just fucking say who you are. Exactly. I think I think why people trust it so much or like it more is because they trust you because they know at the end of the day if you're exactly who you are you're probably not gonna lie. You know yeah. what I mean? Like there's nothing. You have I have to- such a problem with being fake. Oh, it sucks. With being fake. Yeah. It sucks. You know, I mean. You with yourself me or in others? You mean. <laughs> with yourself or in others? Uh, well, for, for myself, it's very hard for me to fake the funk. So if I don't like you, you're going to know it within like fucking 30 seconds. It's cool. just like it's, it's pretty, awkward. It's and pretty it's great not, to watch. I can't fake it. It's really fun. And it saddens me when I see, especially in our business, we see all these fucking trainers that are so full of shit. All right, come on, let's do oh. it, guys. And it's like, no. Dude, stop. You know what a big part of that is, too, that I was realizing the other Ego day? Ego stroking. Ego stroking. It's also like like when you're in a bad mood, being in a bad mood. I like could be, I, I'd rather be in a bad mood than being. I would a, rather someone be if they are in a bad mood, Word. like act like it. So like at least I know what's going on. Yeah. You know, yeah. like this is a thing with trainers, and it really puts me off. It's the thing you were talking about where they're always peppy, and today's a good day, and yeah. we're gonna oh welcome, just pull yourself welcome up by your bootstraps, and like welcome to gym, we're gonna work out. It's like. If you're like that every day, I don't trust you. I don't because trust you for you're, shit. Because you're, you're a human. <laughs> you're hiding something. <laughs> you're a human, and you have bad days too, and you're not showing it, which means you're lying to me, which means I don't trust you. Yeah, I act the same way with my clients, the same way I act with my friends, with my it's relatives, true. with everybody. Yeah. Dropping F-bombs like motherfucking Nagasaki over here. Yeah. There's an F in there somewhere. There is. Yeah, people, people will uh, they'll appreciate that. You know, you people just do. like... you just Because you build a real relationship. It's not, you know... Yeah. That's I'm a real just here to fucking work. Like on the train the other day, we were just super honest and nice with that lady. We had an awesome conversation. Yeah, it was, it was pretty great. Did she, she have a mustache? She and so you told hot. her about her mustache. She was so hot. No, she had a mustache. No, it was just she, this, this she was girl, like six foot. This girl walking the train. She was very tall, yeah. like like remarkably tall. And uh, Alec and I were just in a very like open mood. And we were like, "How tall are you?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, she's just never loved, heard that before. No, we just talked for five. She minutes. She probably hasn't. I don't know. You know, she looked that bitch was tall. sort of surprised, but she was like, <laughs> yeah. she looked like she was like six two with with those heels on. Yeah, she was massive. When she's you have tall. a girl that good looking and that tall, it's she's super intimidating tall. for people. It's just very interesting. Yeah, um, Alec, those are the girls you should be going for. Totally, I'll climb that was, mountain. It was totally the type of girl that you would be like, this girl is gonna blow us. All. Like she's just gonna act so cool. No, not oh, blow, blow us. Like, mind. Blow, blow us off. Blow us off. I was I like, really? I didn't finish my. I didn't pick up on that, Kyle. That's not what, what train happened. was this? I was this like, where is he going time. with this? <laughs> <laughs> this girl's gonna blow us off. Off. You know, thought she was like that type that was just gonna be a real bitch about it. Yeah. You know? Not at all. Super cool. Too cool. Super cool. She's a marquee girl. She's talking about how she likes going to marquee. So you might run into her marquee. Oh, okay. What's your history oh, with marquee? Oh, okay. Oh no, it's just a really cool club. Oh. Great sound system. Okay. They have, that. they have an incredible sound system. Dude, I took so, uh, Alec once to see uh, so my first club experience. Why don't we do that sometime? Because I've never done that. I've, you, I'm sorry, what? I've never done that. Really? We've I've been, never done what? Like tr- the club experience in New York. Mm-hmm. 
Wanna go? I feel bad for you, son. Is that is bad? I mean, I feel like it's something I probably won't want to do all the time. Yeah, I don't. But like it. also it's, feel like it's an experience I want to have. It like, depends on the crowd that you're with. It doesn't matter who the fuck is there, because every club you go to in the city, you're gonna have fucking cunty ass people. Okay. Uh, depending on the kind of music you like, uh, I mean, Marquis known, I guess, more house. for his like house music, you know, whatever. And uh, that I love that shit. So I, I have been to the clubs, but like I Blue went. Blue Oyster doesn't count. I went with like. <laughs> My clients that are like really rich and they bought like a table. It was really awkward. Like mm. it was a very strange situation because they spent a lot of money to get VIP service. But then when you're in this blocked off area, it's so loud. Nobody's yeah, talking so. and everybody's pretending to be to be having fun. You were talking about how like you hate it when people are fake. Holy shit. It was one of the fakest moments of, I've ever been in. Because, oh, no, like, we have fun when we go. Because out. there's like eight people around this table and everybody's like, yeah. All right. Isn't the point of a club to like go out and like be with people? Yeah. You would like, think. And I, it was driving me crazy to the point where I just wanted to leave this area that whatever you paid was. whatever how much money for where, where and just was fucking this? have fun. I think this was at um, uh, what's the one by Tao? The Lava. one across the street. Lavo. Lava. This was Lavo. Yeah, that's a weird one. Yeah. You, are you like a club connoisseur? You, you, uh, is that a big, big thing you do with artists? <laughs> I've dabbled a lot. <laughs> I've made a lot of friends. <laughs> it's, it's a, a it's weird a weird, world, man. It's a weird sect. You know of what he does at a club? club? People. It's awesome. You know what he does? What? He's fucking. People know him for this. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. He's known for this. It's just the fucking he whistle. He fucking whistles. What? And it's absurdly <laughs> exactly. It's absurdly loud. And can it's I, always. Can I make a request? It's no, nah, I can't do it in yeah, the back. Just, no, no, just right in the back. Can you do it in the corner? Do it. Do it right in the back. I need music. I'm not gonna do it like that. Okay. What kind of? I'll I'll drop a beat. No, I'm not gonna do it. What do you need? <laughs> do you need do some? It, dude. Do you need some? Uh, Kyle's got Pitbull on his laptop. Yeah, dude, I, I got Pitbull <laughs> and Eminem, and Will no, I no. Am. No, I'm good. Um, dude, I was yeah, no. he does okay. this rhythmatic whistle, like just, and people are like, yeah, man, the whistle, really? like the so, whistle guy. gets so amped yeah, for just, the whistle just, guy. Cause I just love hyping people up, so it sucks. He's sometimes. really good at when it. I go when I go somewhere like on a fucking dance floor, and everyone's just like doing the, you yeah, know, and here comes this Goliath of a human. Fucking giving out high fives, <laughs> shaking hands, kissing babies, and everyone gets fucking live. Wait, wait, wait. Alec, was that your impression of, of Marcos? Yeah. <laughs> that, that if, Mar if Marcos, Marcos didn't have an internet history, he could be the best politician on the planet. I <laughs> swear to God. If he didn't have an internet history, he would be fine. Internet history. He would be. He's one of the most social people I've ever seen in public. It's, it's yeah. insane. It's, the, <laughs> it's true. It's it's fucking weird, man. I just like so, Marcos, you're, you're not one of those people, like, if I've talked to you, like, for, like, five minutes, like, two and a half of those minutes, you're going to be on your phone. Dude, true story. No, I hate no. that shit. Yeah, I hate that shit. I mean, too. true story, I would vote for him for, for mayor. Yeah. I'd vote Over for anybody us. that was running last election. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. The whistle, whistle platform. That, oh, that'd, be, he'd have a, that'd be his commercial, like his political campaign, where he's just whistling to house music marquee, <laughs> just like, and he's moving his tits, just shirtless, just. just so do you, do you with still, Kyle and you doing push-ups on my on my back <laughs> on your back, yeah. Yeah. try push-up. <laughs> do you do you uh, do you still go to clubs ever? Nah, man. You know what? This Done? year's been a little slow. Yeah, I just haven't. With the whole, is it expensive percent, hobby to have? It is very Dude. expensive. Yeah. Um, I lost a big contract with uh, one of my clients that I had a, a corporate account. Ooh. And that was a six-figure loss. Ooh. Yeah, so mm. motherfuckers ain't fucking getting Ooh. table service anymore. So now That's crazy. Like, you had a contract with a company yeah. to train. It was great. Um, wow. I had that for two and a half years. Wow. Solid move. So, so how'd that work for other trainers that are interested in different ways to organize your... To get stacks on your stacks service, on. sell drugs, stacks rap, service. play ball. Stacks. You're never gonna make no, it. But, uh, <laughs> what I mean is, like, do you you get paid a certain amount and you just train these people when they want to get trained, or how how did how was it structured? So what had happened was I had been training the CEO for three years, and uh, one day he approached me. He was like, "Yo, man, I'm moving my office. I'm gonna have more space. It really sucks for me to travel down here. I'll pay you to build out my gym, and I'll pay you to uh, train my employees." fucking worked out great wow. so i basically went over there uh gave him a uh sort of model basically and they subsidized he designed the gym i designed the gym as well and uh basically they subsidized the sessions so whatever i charged you know they the company would, paid for paid most for, of it and right. the employee paid a small Same. amount so i was doing 
a lot of fucking sessions. Did you like when it was good? Was it good? It was great. It was a great job. It was a great, great gig. It Solid. was amazing. But you you were and like, it's like it was like it's like my own little gym. You know, it's yeah. probably nine hundred square feet just for myself. I got a GHR in there, a full cage. Wow. Wow. Kettlebells, wow. treadmill, rower. No clue what any of that stuff is, but it sounds it's awesome. All, it's, it's, it's cool. Gym porn. Clearly, it's no clue. Gym porn. It's gym porn. No offense, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> was... Well, Marcos, you should know just because you're looking at this. This used to be 320. Yeah. So he was big. Little respect. What do you, What do you know? <laughs> 250. Let me know when you're 220. So like I was I'm, saying, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm getting there. That's what. That's my goal. Yeah. That's my goal. Dude, Good man. for you, man. You hitting the weights? Actually, no, I was. I just play soccer every day. When I uh, dropped out of Stony Brook University, I was 265, just fat as fuck. Yeah, he was, he was a fat dude, too. He was a fatty. Fat as fuck. And then I was like, this can't get me late. I need to start working out. So if you were to design your your favorite gym or your best gym, like if you were going to design a uh, like a 2,000 square foot gym for yourself now, what, would it, what would it look like? No, Stripper yes, poles. Yes. Stripper poles Honestly, everywhere. for yourself. Honestly, for, for training... Well, Every, I actually have perfect, been thinking about the perfect way that you would like to train yourself and people. Like, what would that gym look like? What would be in there? Walk me through it. I guess it would be like one of those like D1 gyms. Like, think like, I don't know, like yeah. fucking Texas or Arizona, you mm -hmm. know, just cages, uh, glute ham rays, airdyne bike, uh, dumbbells, barbells. That's it. Really don't need any machines for isolation or any of that shit. That it's, really doesn't make you strong. It's remarkable to me because I feel like all the smart trainers I've talked to about, like, I've, that I've asked this question, they all say that same, same thing. Exactly. They're like, you don't need much. You need, like, yeah. you know, racks, barbells, some dumbbells, maybe kettlebells, I'm not GHDs, a big fan of the racks. Good to go. With, the, like, the half squat rack? I'm really not, like, I don't like the rogue like, racks. Like, the, but, like, um... Uh, some the hammer sort of strength, like the huge cages, like the, cage, the full cage, right, where you cage. can have band attachments. Uh, right. Okay. You have uh, you can mess around with the with the spots for like uh, or the pins, whatever they yes. may come in. You mm -hmm. can do partial presses. Cages. Yeah, that's cages that's what I meant. Day. Cages. Those are cool. Cages like just day. like I I I always thought like the way they should be designing these personal training gyms is the way that they design barber shops. You know, like there's a station. This is where this yeah. barber like he has all his equipment here. You like take a client in. You don't have to tr move around. And, well, like, when you go, go to D one school, they have ten fucking cages. You right. know, it's like yeah. right. it's it's perfect. Right. What, what, and why is no one doing that? What was, what well, was the, the real estate too? I mean, you, you think about in the Midwest. You go to you know anywhere in the Midwest. Your the worst high school team has the best gym in New York City. Yeah, it's like ten fucking platforms, ten cages. Yeah. But that's not what people want, though, because look at all the gyms here. Yeah. They all look exactly the same. It's all machines of some sort. It's all just... I think it's just... Oh, there's a weird transition now with the whole CrossFit thing, yeah. too. So it's like the people are wanting... And CrossFit's changed you know, the way that people perceive yeah, uh, it's working not, out. It's not the adductor, you know, yeah. <laughs> fucking so ab crunch anymore. Yeah. Sure. We, we, we made all that, like, I guess, 70s and 80s bodybuilding. Made all yeah, that shit. For sure. Well, it, it was a good move at the time, and yeah. it still serves a good purpose. Like, when you go to Steel and see the guys training at Steel, you're yeah, like, this good. is fucking perfect. They're Goliaths. It's perfect. Yeah. Like, this gym is perfect. Everything about it is the way it should be. And, like, there's machines everywhere. These dudes are huge. The way they train. They're all right. This, it they're, all right. they're not that big. They're not that strong either. There's some big dudes in there. Dude, there's Goliaths. But they're not dude. that strong. Who cares? But they're, they're not trying to be. Calm they're down, to be big. boy. Calm down. He's how, getting at the gym too. <laughs> how strong do you want to be, Marcos? What's what? What are the numbers in your head? It's not really numbers. It's just really? like a surviving a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> I like well, it. Well, that's not just strength. That's like surviving the that's zombie skills. apocalypse. That's you gotta learn. That's, and being hold, attractive hold enough. That's a great answer. It is a great <laughs> Thank answer. You. That's a fucking Thank great you. answer. Do you, you want to go shoot arrows with me and Alex sometime? Learn yeah. how to uh, like, uh, I'll bring a tomahawk. Tomahawk. Okay. I'll just throw a tomahawk. See, like my goal. Vegans. My goal is to be able to handle my body weight well. All right. Yeah, you, you that's what I want to be able to do. I want to be able to do fucking pull-ups. That's what you should. Never that's how you should be do. training yourself. You should be doing body weight moves. I, I'm I'm a big believer that like uh, our bodies work through signaling, and the signals that we send it are the way it's going to adapt. So if we keep sending a signal that you have to be strong relative to your body weight, if you're using doing handstand push-ups, if you're yeah. doing muscle-ups, if you're doing chin-ups, if you're doing even TRX work, inverted rows, push-ups, burpees. Like, if you're actually using your body to do this stuff, you're going to both send uh, the signal that you have to be lighter because if you're lighter, you'll be able to do this better and to be stronger relative to, to your weight. So it's all 
signaling. If you send the signal that you have to be able to lift this massive amount of weight, then it's going to adapt in that in that way. If you're sending a signal, you have to be able to lift a moderate amount of weight many times. That's how it's going to adapt. But it's all signaling. What signal are you sending? Sweet. Was a question. Is that a question? No. Sweet that's, signal. That's how. I, like I was. It. I was just sharing like my it. philosophy oh, okay. of like uh, five minutes. To, you the thank you for putting that in my head though, because that's been happening to me lately. I'm, <clears> I, I'm living in the Bronx and I'm living right across from um, Van Cortlandt Park. Yeah. And there's a lot of soccer that happens there. Like they have public fields. So I've just been playing and doing like pickup games, and I've just been getting like just exponentially, exponentially faster than I've ever been dude, before. That cardio, you, son. If yeah. you want to, oh, and it's hard, dude, doing the the, the anaerobic cardio. Like just <laughs> stop, go, stop, go, stop. It go. can be really simple Crazy. like that too. Like if you want to look like a soccer player, fucking play soccer. Yeah. Right. Play <laughs> soccer every day. <laughs> That's what they do. Like if you want to look like a marathon runner. Fucking go run marathons. <laughs> if you want to look like you do CrossFit, go do CrossFit. If you want to look that. like you're powerlifter, go powerlift. Yeah, simple like what, as that. It's what, really it really that isn't complicated. People think that it's like really like um, mystical. Yeah, yeah. And like it's magical. Not, it's, not it's, that not. They, it's not that they think it's magical. <clears throat> they want the shortest, fastest yeah. way there. Yeah. So when they see a dickhead trainer that's like, hey, man, you want to lose 50 pounds? I'll get you there in 10 sessions. I have I have magic. <laughs> I have secrets. <laughs> I, I have the shortcut. Pill. I have secrets. No, it's taken for any one of you, especially you two, because you you're, you're ten. You guys both have ten years on me to get just half of where you've gone. It takes at least a decade. It take, I think people don't realize how much fucking time it takes totally. to get anywhere near the goals you've achieved in fitness. Totally. Like I think people just assume, oh, you just yeah. How long have you guys been been training? Like, Dude, like honestly, doing... twenty years. I, I I probably started working out when I was. No, I definitely started working out. But when like I was after in sixth college grade. and after football, like you started. It was different, yeah, because because up until football was over, I was just taking orders. Right. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't like I remember that. I wasn't thinking about it in terms of uh, program design. Or anything. No, I, I didn't care. I just I was listening to what they told me to do, and I mm -hmm. did that. But then when it was over, and I had to start making decisions for myself, that's when the journey began. It was helpful that like I had been working out before that because I knew how to do exercises, right. like I knew the proper technique and stuff. But I didn't really, I didn't understand training effect. I, I like even at that point, I didn't understand that. Oh wait. So when the reps are lower, you get stronger? Weird. I knew you kept rotating, but I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't know that. Like, and when they're higher, you build more muscle? Huh. Yeah. No oh, shit. <laughs> like, that's well, why you were doing that. Well, golly. It was really funny. Yeah. Like, yeah. that whole process was, it, I looked back retroactively, and things started to make sense. So you didn't at all, you didn't look at the program your coaches had, the, nope. their percentages uh, dude, of your Dude, I was a soldier. Or, no, that wasn't, that was wasn't popular soldier. back then. What's that? Periodization, like percentages and all that stuff i don't think we too did many we were doing did that. Well, how'd you get started like, what we was did your that story? probably starting in college like i don't know that that was a thing we did in high school but definitely in college we were periodizing throughout the year definitely I but i didn't so. know that it was called periodizing yeah. i just you just knew it was a thing you did. i knew we changed every like three months you know what was it um for you then your beginning phases of training my dad was a boxer and he was always like in fucking crazy shape he could still fuck me up now and i was always like i guess a little chubbier so then when i was probably 15 16 i started doing push-ups and by push-ups i mean a lot of fucking push-ups like hundreds of fucking day. Like army type push-ups yeah right? like uh that's how i started one of my uncles then became a competitive bodybuilder and he oh, would give me okay. advice and um was he any good yeah, he was actually pretty good for a guy who never who was natural. Um, then after that, went to college again, got fat, smoking a lot of that reefer, you know those munchies, Allegedly. you losers. No, oh, no, I smoke mad motherfucking weed. <laughs> <laughs> no, allegedly there. Dude, <laughs> Playing I, a lot of crazy I, taxi. I, and I think it's stuff. important for all weed smokers out there. If there's any ten people that are listening to this, say you smoke. Do weed. yourselves and your environment a favor and just come out of the closet as a weed smoker. Yeah. It will help change the entire environment. Because more the more people can see that there are professionals that smoke weed, yeah, dude. the better. It will give them permission to like explore this very to, for me a very helpful and, and important uh yeah. substance. Here, aid. Here. And those who, those who don't want to hang out with you after you say you're a weed smoker, you, you don't really, want to hang them. out with them anyway. No, so go smoke your weed, they make suck. new friends. Who the them. fuck wouldn't want to hang out with weed smokers? You'd anyway. be surprised. You'd be very yeah. You'd be shocked. Uh, 
I have some, I have like business I... type friends that like you know because I I'm I'm in a different kind of area sure. in the music industry. So sure. I have friends that are like in the business side. You know they have, they wear you know nice clothes and all yeah. that shit. Like this is my business attire when I come here. Like this is appropriate, right? You know, but like. You know, I explain to them that I smoke often, you know, yeah. and I'll, I'll come to see them like after I, I just smoked yeah. and like I'll have the whole evening. I have a wonderful evening with them and then I'll have a conversation with them afterwards and they'll be like, yeah, you didn't drink or anything. I was like, oh, I was high as a kite. <laughs> They're like, no, really? That's like, because they're yeah. on fucking coke and other stuff. <laughs> yes. That's I was because like, the 48 like, yeah, Adderalls dude, I, they took that yeah, morning. Yeah. 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 They're like, you know, really? They I couldn't tell. Shit. I was like, well... I, it's not something I was just like yeah. gonna advertise. I just went and I had a good time, and I was me, and that was it, and it was great. End of story. <laughs> End of story. That's well, no, and a, a big problem too is like I think people haven't they don't realize the diversity in the types of marijuana and yeah. the oh the, yeah the Strange. proper way not to overdo it right. because if you over you can overdo weed way faster than alcohol. Like yeah. if, if you're gonna get drunk off beers, it's gonna take like. 10, 15, 20 beers. I don't know, depending yeah. on who you After are. Maybe That's ever. a long yeah. time. Right on there. But if you're if you're smoking, it only takes me one. like if I if you just like gave me a joint and you're like, see how high you can get in five minutes. You get fucking I could get blasted. Wreck. You can talk to Jesus after one joint. One solid joint with a little bit of hash oil and some keef in there. Guess what you're doing? Jesus. Nothing. What are you I could be a sarcophagus. So unnecessary. No, but oh, I'm going deep. <laughs> I would be here. Just uh, <laughs> the thing too is that Five people minutes. don't realize that just like alcohol, weed has different effects on different people. Oh yeah. yeah. When Absolutely. I smoke weed, I get high as shit. Okay. I get hungry as a motherfucker. Yeah. And I get lazy. But I have friends. Is that all weed or just indicas? If you don't mind me asking. I don't fucking know the difference. See, that's the thing. Like, when you go to Washington Heights. Problem. Or when Indicas I did, then. you yeah. don't tell your fucking drug dealer, hey, excuse me, sir, do you have any indica or this and that? Motherfucker, right. like, yo, here, take that motherfucking dime bag and get the fuck out. Right. Anyway. I don't appreciate that. Sir, but, I'm um, offended. Right. I'm, I take, <laughs> I feel like that was a You're racist. You're going to get a bad yelp from that you. That was a racist. No, it's racist true, man. I have, I have many friends from urban areas, yeah, and I ask them urban what they Urban, from the, the hood, fuck? from the ghetto. <laughs> anyway. I'm from an urban area myself, urban. but yeah. it's right. just like they don't urban understand life. the differences. Yeah, yeah. And then I have friends that fucking smoke weed and can recite fucking books verbatim. Yeah. For those Mel. people, allegedly, allegedly, for those people, it's like, hey, man, smoke every day, please, because you're definitely making the world a better place. Yeah. Me, I'm at home playing fucking Need for Speed, hoping the fucking cops don't bust my fucking door down and fucking I think you're referring face. to a sat sativas. When you get really creative and you're kind of energetic, that's usually a sativa, typically. That's yeah. all I smoke. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't great. smoke until I was like 27, 28. Like I was in New York for after I was after I was in New York for about two years. Yeah. And uh, I fucking changed me, man. Well, I started you high. You funny shit. Me. Yeah. But You're I like was normal. I mean, I was an asshole. Like I was telling Alec. He was. Like, I, you would I, not enjoy him. Last night I was uh, I was smoking with uh, Alec and, and my buddy and we uh, like I, I kind of had it dawned on me. I fully like realized yeah. a what a fucking asshole i was before i smoked weed like i was i i was such a dickhead jock dude like i was such an asshole I was that also so, comes with like i was so dismissive i was so i i treated people poorly i didn't think about them i didn't consider their feelings i didn't consider how i was making other people feel i didn't consider that's like, just the evolution of man imprint. buddy I it's didn't. I didn't consider what I was supposed to do, or like my effect on the world, or what I, you know. I didn't consider fucking why we're here, or like holy shit, like what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Like, I just had this moment of like we're supposed to just accept that this is normal. Like this is normal. Life is normal. The fact that we exist is normal because yeah. it shouldn't be. There should be nothing. Why? Why is this happening? Why are you conscious? Why am I conscious? All is this, this stuff. motherfucker high right now? No, no we just, we just no, were talking about like, this last this night. Is, like, but we were really these are now. all the things that we makes made me think. And yeah. then like, wait, I'm gonna die. What happens after you die? Do you know? Does anybody know? Nobody knows. What the fuck? Yeah. Wait, like, sh shouldn't we be talking about this? I know. Like, but shouldn't I can't we be worry. like bringing this up? <laughs> you know, like, and and I know, but I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. He knows. It's a fault. Marco's got the key. <laughs> But it, like it right. definitely can change people for the better. Like there, there's a lot of people, and I yeah. think a lot of people like me that lived in a very, very sure of, of a very like yeah. uh, cocky 
way of li- living life. Where very, I'm sure what's going on, and I don't, you know, I don't need any answers, and I don't want to question things. And weed humbled me. Yeah. I, well, I think a lot of people like that, like basically like yourself, you were describing. <laughs> um, they live in a bubble most well, oftentimes, right? Like you always live in like, like a perception bubble. Most people don't want to think about that because it's fucking terrifying. But you know, once you start smoking weed or doing any sort of psychedelic, you fucking. I think I think that eliminates fear. Like three weeks ago, doing Wachuma, Jesus Christ, I think I stopped caring about a lot of things then, like a lot of silly things, like haircuts or whatever the fuck. Wachuma is a it's a new one. It's Miracos was there. It's uh, that's Cactus. that's interesting, man. Because San Pedro had always been peyote, like that's what people knew it as, right? Yeah, but, no, it's not peyote. It's oh, it's very not. It's, it's a sister plan of peyote. Yes. Oh, so they're is totally that, different cactus. Like the ayahuasca. Yeah, yeah. Stuff? Gotcha. No, no, ayahuasca is the main ingredient. It's dimethyltryptamine. San Pedro has mescaline and a bunch of other chemicals oh, in okay. it. Uh, the, as a shaman described it to us, he said San Pedro is like a, a feather gliding you through like little galaxy and lessons, and then. Uh, what was the other one? Peyote is like a hammer hitting you in the head. Mm, wow. Yeah. Yeah, peyote, a peyote is per, apparently like just fucking intense. For the Wachuma, I would describe it as a thousand trips on Mali or MDMA. Yeah. As hmm. they call it. So I hear. Really? Please, kids. So I hear. Just like a. But very guided. Version? But it was very, it was very serene at yeah, the was, same time. As oh, intense as it was. Yeah. Yeah, he was with it. As intense as it was, it was also very serene. Yeah. I mean, we were. And people were, you're connected with the people oh, you're with. Like, shit, you and we were like fucking reading each other's it's minds. Weird. Like, it's weird. It's fucking weird it's as that It's very sounds. odd. We were having a conversation. Like full conversation, just, like, just looking at each other. <laughs> yeah, we were on the same road that day. It was a very odd experience. Like, and the trip. Like, everything happens, like, in synchronicity. Like, there is an order to that trip. Like, you will go through oh, these yeah. phases. And once you go through these phases, then you expand. And then you learn. Like, I had to... I went through, like, the first two or three hours, I was just crying. He just, spoke to a tree for uh, I did. 20 minutes. I had a conversation. This is what happened. That was the beginning of my trip. That's when, I, like, I looked at uh, a per friend of ours, and her hair was just ablaze. And this glorious, beautiful, like, blonde, orange fire. It was weird. So I walked around because it freaked me out. I just remember the parrot yelled at me. I was like, oh, God, it scared me. There's a parrot there. And uh, I had a conversation with a tree. And it, like, it was like, you ready? It was like, no. It was like, don't fight it. I was like, I'm not fighting. It goes, you're fighting it. I was like, I'm not fighting. You're fighting it. And then it the, fucking really came. The there. tree was? Yeah. It was like the tree was talking. Well, it was the forest. The tree was just there. It was, it was telling you to, to yeah, It was just like, get ready. Out. Just, Where were you guys? Yeah. Relax. Upstate, upstate New York. Somewhere. Where? Don't. Upstate don't New York. My Un- guys, undisclosed I'm from, location. I'm from upstate New York. There's towns there. Oh, it, now you're not from an urban area Yeah, well, I'm from an urban area, man. <laughs> I'm also from an urban area. I went to no, nine different schools. I've lived in three different right, states. We're, we're just, and I've never stayed in one place more than four years. Right. It's, all my life. We're just a, so. It's just an undisclosed area. We'll tell you after the podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. Silly goose. Lead with that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, all right, Inspector Gadget. Yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to know where you went. Um, but yeah, it was very unison. Yeah, man. After all that like, crying, I was solid. What? <laughs> this is good. I cried like a bitch myself in well, front of you, everybody. If you had to, uh, we all did. If you had to like boil down uh, the the primary message that you got from the experience, what would that be? If you could put it into words, I know it's first. probably hard to put it into it's hard words. Hard to, but, we'll... but if you tried your best, go ahead, Marco. Go ahead. I think we all. <laughs> Experienced different things <clears throat> yeah. throughout because I mean the trip lasted about twelve hours. Yeah, twelve thirteen hours. Um, some points were more intense than others, but uh, one thing that you definitely do learn is is the way that the Earth just works together. Yes. I mean, we were on our backs just watching sacred geometry like for fucking I hours. T- I was telling Kai, I saw the interconnections that makes everything. Holy shit! You so see it. The whole fucking world just looked like the fucking inside of Rolex watch. Yeah. It looked it's, like one of those it's like fucking patterns. You see how it works. It's it's like fucking, an anime when when the characters together, just like set fields. out spells. It was just that. Yeah. It was just like fuck. It. Like you're like. Fuck! Like I, I, I felt like I've seen it before. Like I was like, oh, they're so the obvious. trees were luminescent, like in yeah. fucking Avatar, like just like glowing, like everything. Well, they were alive. It was just, it, well, they are alive, but like <laughs> with the sky and the wind and the fucking water and your, the fucking animals, everything was just it's Tell about so that, intense. That Buddha trip. <laughs> Tell them about it. So at one point, because we were, it was it, w- it was nine people and we were all together and I just had to get the fuck away. And at one point, I go but down by the pool and I'm just like sitting there and like start to doze off. And I have this fucking image of of uh, of Buddha and Asura or whatever I guess the opposite of Buddha would be, where it's just like a like a demon figure, just like you know fucking six arms or whatever fucking. 
And between them were all of these emotions ranging from happiness to anger and everything just came into like one ball of light. So from one way, from like one dimension of you looking at it, it looked like all these different emotions. But from another angle, it was just like one being, just one entity of just like Zen, of just like peace, where it was like the yin and yang, but just one ball of light. That's awesome. That happened. He, uh, he basically saw and how I started. Worked. It started with when I was dozing off, I just heard like fucking like that, like hundreds and thousands of monks just chanting, like just like it was fucking crazy. Yeah. That happened. So, do, would you say that you gained uh, a deeper understanding for the unity of everything? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, man. It, it really. I think it just calms you down after that. Because, like, I feel like just inherently, just being born as a human, you're born with this like this an intense anxiety. You're shoved into this world from a different dimension that was your mother's womb out into this crazy spinning rock in this in the universe so i think people just have like this pent-up anxiety because this is really fucking terrifying so when you have an experience like that that really breaks down what's around you and then who you are i think you can finally calm the fuck down with the evolution of it man, gave you peace things are so different too you know you know hundreds of years ago when we're all living in like villages and huts together mm. and we're living off the land and now you know we're born in a fucking hospital to fucking shit motherfuckers that look like aliens when they're pulling you out and mm or cooped up, the sense of community and, like, your respect for the earth isn't the same as it is when, you know, let's say we're fucking Vikings. Yeah. You know, <laughs> fishing and everyone's doing something. You respect your elders. The, the, whole, the whole sense of community is completely different. Whereas now, it's... Yeah. yeah, it's weird. It's almost like we know too much. Like, it was a little bit easier to all work together and respect the whole system when we didn't know as yeah. much about the yeah. world as we do. And now that we know so much about it, we, we've become, like... Further away. We've yeah. I don't necessarily yeah. see it as a bad thing, though. No, like I we're, know. We're a self-evolving species, like, I so it know might more. go somewhere. That's what we're trying to do. Peaking. Like, it's part of the reason I think it's why... Time to I don't think we're. Oh, peaking, I totally but disagree. I, I think we're yeah. de we're, we're far from peaking. Yeah, but we're at a weird point where it's like going back to that same subject of of uh, community and things being simpler. Now we have the internet, which in a way, some people who are more spiritual would say, you know, that's pulling us away from being one with the earth. But at the same time, that's the shit that taught us about ayahuasca and yeah. is connecting us to this whole bigger community. Yeah. Well, we're more like the aware earth now. has found its way into that too. Well and if you if you that's a good way of putting it. well the earth supplied the tools to make it. It is the earth. Yeah. Whether and, like, and if you yeah, if you're part of us, uh, we're part of the earth. Right it's now. growing out of the earth, right? We're growing we're fruiting from the earth like apples out of a tree. And I mean if you asked like McKenna or uh Ray Kurzweil, you know, what's going on with like this this added communication like it, it's we're all just sort of merging into the same being and we might have been the same being all along we're just learning how to communicate with each other like if you imagine all the cells of your body they're all separate you know they mm -hmm. all have individual like mo's right but the better that they all work together the better your entire body works together and we're all these separate beings that the more harmonious that we start to like interact with each other, the, the better our communication, yeah. the better we can like work together as the same unit. Yeah. We become a bigger form. Like yeah. we be, we will. Birth, God, I can't wait to go to Mars. We will birth, <laughs> yeah, out something, you know, even bigger. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah, we said this the other day. The internet has supplied a way for the humanity to remove cancerous cells, whether it be people or or a bad idea. You know, like, so, like, remember a couple months ago, I was talking about this last night when that dumb college girl was talking about how she, racist rants against Asians. Twitter. She, she, yeah, she was. She got famous because of it. And then, you know, know everyone about. shit on her. She got kicked out of her school. She's rightly so. She's rightly so. Stupid. That person, I'm sorry, is a cancer. Like, if you really think that and you're, like, 20 years old, there's something wrong with you. Like, there's no way. They need fixed. Yeah, they need help. And one way to fix them would be to, like, give them a good slap in the fucking face and say, hey, yeah. bitch, like, you yes. can't fucking act like this yeah. and be part of society. No. If you want to be, if you if if you want to act like this, you're gonna get kicked out of school. You want to act like this, nobody's gonna give you a job. You want to act like this, things are not Chances gonna be good. Chances are you don't get laid too. Right, so. nobody's gonna fuck you. Nope, not happening. Sorry. Oh, we could curse on here. Yeah. You fuck fuck. You've been cursing. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, wait, what? <laughs> Pay attention. I was like, wait, what words Pay aren't curses for attention. you then? <laughs> wait, haven't we been yeah. cursing the whole time? <laughs> What's it sound like when you do curse? Yeah. <laughs> Death metal. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Sounds like Rammstein on crystal meth. <laughs>
<laughs> I've met that guy. He's awesome. Really? Whoa, whoa. All right. Ramstein? Did he sit in this chair? No, I've gone to I'm his studio. His studio's chair. down in like LES. Can't wait to go with you. Do. Yeah. Speaking of which, how about Do those us. fucking Germans Ish. fucking those little Brazilians in the ass? Huh? Dude, that was a crazy game to watch and a crazy way to describe it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Brazil. I, really I know, you know. I got it. It was yeah. good. Yeah. I really like the subtleties. I felt really sad for them. Me like too. that's uh, Dude, they, they like they how many rocked. people? How many people are going to commit suicide over that? A lot. There was a lot it of depression babies made well, that you night. Know what? Yeah, no shit. <laughs> a lot of depression. depression I was very babies. surprised, and they may have repressed this in some parts. So I'm surprised like the favelas didn't break out in fucking Dude, World right? War III. No riot. I actually have a bus. No uh, riot. No riots. A guy I work for. Thank God. Build the uh, or communication anyone. trucks for for the World Cup. Like he built the broadcast trucks, hmm. and he, we still have people down there. So when they lost, he told me that like there was the president was like addressing the people, and like TV Globo, like the the uh, the, the main the main station down there was like you know covering all these different things that were happening around around brazil so it was it was not a happy it wasn't good no shit rudy was down there well i think on that note on that note (laughs) we did it viva brazil viva viva brazil and marcos Um, oh marcos you have any plugs you want to plug anything butt plugs cool (laughs) (laughs) cowfield winner Kyle got his uh his medal for uh, most awesome. butt plugs for beating ever. an old man in a weightlifting competition. JK, don't hurt me, Dan. Here we go. All right, <laughs> Audi. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>